What's up, YouTube? Let's go. Another live Andy Krueger here. But of course, who else would it be on my channel? Feels like a minute since I've done one of these. Been a couple weeks. I'm fresh off decoying the French Ring Championships right here in America, right here in Ohio, in fact. And I'm here to tell you guys all about it. Once I ramble on for a bit about that, I'm going to take your questions and solve all the world's dog problems one question at a time. Just kidding. Not really. French Ring Championships. I was the decoy along with a French decoy who just happens to be the best in the world currently. So it was one heck of an event. Let's start basic. Let's start from the ground up. What is French ring? French ring is a French dog sport. France, French, duh. It's a dog sport. It was developed as a breeding standard for dogs and later turned into a sport. It's been around for over a hundred years. It's been in the US since 1987, I believe. But French ring is a French dog sport. It has a specific program to the sport. There's a brevet, a level one, a level two, a level three. Level three being the biggest and best. In the French ring sport, they test every part of the dog every part of their genetics, and every part of their training. So it, it involves agility, obedience, and bite work. Those are the three right there. Agility, obedience, and bite work. Let's take ring three, for example, because that's where the big boys play. The dog has to perfectly execute a number of jumps, a hurdle, a long jump, and a palisade, to be exact. If you scroll all the way down through my channel videos, you'll actually see a video that's dedicated to just talking about the French ring jumps, if you're interested. But the jumps are a very important part of the program. They're worth a ton of points. Obedience-wise, there is a laundry list of obedience exercises the dog has to execute perfectly. Three different retrieves, a send out, change of positions, healing, stays, food refusal, etc., etc., And then for the fun stuff, the bite work, big list, seven exercises that the dog has to complete. Face attack, gun attack, flea attack, stop attack, defense, a handler, search and escort, object guard. So I was selected to decoy this event. Neira, North American Ring Sport Association. That's French ring in the States. The organization is called NARA. You can't compete in French ring if you're not a member of NARA. You can't have a French ring club unless it's registered with NARA. NARA is the governing body of French ring in the United States. So NARA puts on all these events. My club, Cincinnati Ring Sport, was actually selected to host this competition. So me and my club hosted, which is a beast for sure. Uh, but NARA is the organization. So the way that French Ring in the States works, you have to be in a club. You have to start a club to play. So you're going to have your club trials throughout the year. Every club's going to throw a trial or two. They're all around the States. Ringsport.org. You can see a big club list and all the locations and contact info, uh, but every club is going to have a club level trial. This is the lowest level of trial. So you have your club level. Then towards the end of the year, we're going to have our regional trials, one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast to accommodate the competitors. So you got club level, you got regionals, and then you have nationals. That's the NARA championship and cup that I decoyed. It's the biggest event of the year, the most important event of the year. 
That's for the big boys. So the way I was selected, there was actually another decoy, a level three that was supposed to decoy the event. He got hurt and had to pull out. Another decoy who was next in line was hurt. He couldn't decoy. So Nara calls your boy and they say, Andy, we need you. And I said, I'm there. So I decoyed this event. I think I did a great job. Everything went well. I'm still in one piece. I still have all my limbs. I still have my face. So everything went well. But we fly in a French judge and a French decoy for every championship. So French judge was there. Currently, the very best decoy in the world was there. And when I say the best decoy, not only my opinion, but on paper. This guy has won the decoy super selection this year by a landslide. This guy in the championship of France probably had one of the best decoy performances ever. So it's not just me or some guy saying, hey, this guy's the best. He actually goes out on the field and proves it. So decoying with him was a, a massive honor and the experience is invaluable. So it's a two-day trial, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, we do the ring ones and ring twos. Sunday, we do the ring threes. And then afterwards, a decoy super selection. Um, so all the competitors come to town that week of Friday is what's called open field. It's where the competitors have the opportunity to come to the venue, to come to the field, get their dogs out there and do some training before the trial. So Friday's open field, Friday night in French Ring in Nara, we have what's called a judge's dinner. It's a dinner where it's mandatory for all the competitors to go because at that dinner, they do what's called the draw. And again, we'll take ring three, for example. There's 22 total exercises and all of those are going to be in a random order that they pick on Friday night. So it's a level playing field for all the competitors, aka they don't know until Friday night what the order of everything is going to be. So it's more of a true test for the dog. You can't predetermine the order and go out there and just autopilot it. So we have our draw. So all the competitors, they'll pick out of a hat. Okay, look, stop attack is first. Oh, defensive handler is next. Oh, face attack is third, etc. So Friday night we have the draw. And when the draw happens, that's when the decoys are going to know what exercises they're going to have. So ring three, there are seven bite work exercises. This is the meat and potatoes of the program. This is where everything counts. If your dog can't do the obedience by then, they probably shouldn't be on the field. Those seven bite work exercises are what's going to determine everything. So typically there's seven. So one decoy is going to take the top three or four exercises. The second decoy is going to take the bottom three or four exercises. So the decoys chat amongst themselves. Usually the senior decoy has the pick and you can determine what exercises you're going to do. Um, guys, at this event, I am not kidding you. There were the best dogs in the world. I know that they're the best dogs in the country, but I've competed on a world level. I've been to France many times. I've watched the big events. I've participated in the big events. These dogs hang with those dogs all day long. Even the level ones, the level twos, there were some insanely good dogs. Ring three was just a lineup of six dogs that are killers insanely fast, insanely strong. The list goes on and on. My advantage of being a decoy, an active decoy, a high level decoy, a three-time championship decoy, not only do I get to see firsthand what all the very best dogs in the world look like, I get to go at it with them. I'm the one that gets to test them. I'm the one trying to hold them off a bite. 
I'm the one trying to pick apart their training. I'm the one trying to use their genetics against them. So it's one thing to watch a football game. It's another thing to actually play in the game. So one of my advantages of being a, a dog trainer is that I am an active, high-level decoy. I am on the field in the biggest events of the year going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these dogs. So trust me, guys, if somebody knows what an amazing dog looks like and feels like, it's this guy. So being on the ground floor, seeing what all the, the current best dogs look like, their genetics, their lines, their training, um, it's a great privilege. It's an honor. And it, it just keeps me active, keeps me in the loop. Uh, you know, it's great. I knew what the best dogs four years ago looked like, but it's constantly changing. So, man, it, it was one heck of, of an event. I did a good job. The French decoy uh, did a ridiculous job. Oh, my God. I would not want to be a competitor against that guy. He was smacking dogs around right and left, metaphorically speaking, physically too. Uh, insane to watch him. Every time I decoy under a, a French judge, their knowledge and experience is so extensive. It's crazy. I'm like a little white belt compared to what those guys have seen. So it was a level up for sure. It was a good time. NARA Championship, North American Ring Sport Association Championship, year-end event. People from all over the country, all over the country, people from out of the country came and competed in it. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, those dogs, I can't say it enough. Those dogs will let you know where you're at as a decoy. If you don't get out of their way on those attacks, you going down, baby. You going down. You might not walk the same ever. Your knee might bend the other way now. You may lose a hand. So going up against those guys puts things into perspective. And, um, man, it was a great event. Anyone with any questions about NARA or regionals or championships, hit me in the comments. Hit me with a question. Um, but that kind of sums up the event. Um, great, great event. I'm honored to have been part of it. Let's go, baby. Three time. One more year. Let's go. Let's get to some questions now, y'all. What do we got? Got here early for the good seats. Oh, yeah. We live. Yes, we are, sir. Let's go. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, YouTube? <laughs> Love it. Hey, Andy, still working on your recall training method. We going good with that, but we are still not perfect. Having a perfect recall, it's one of the most highly sought after behaviors of every dog owner. Therefore, it's very valuable. Therefore, it's very hard to achieve. I want you guys to remember that whether you're training a recall or a heel or an object guard, I want you to remember that if it's valuable, if it's highly sought after, that means it's extremely difficult to get. So bad training sessions, do not be discouraged. Keep showing up day after day after day, and eventually you're going to have that perfect recall. I plan on getting a service dog. Which dog would you recommend for that? I would recommend doing business with a highly credible service dog organization that makes real service dogs. The only thing that there's more of than fake service dogs is fake protection dogs. Everyone has a service dog. Now, this is my service dog, but to have a real service dog, it takes a unicorn of a dog and it takes extensive training. And this is like you learning how to drive a race car at the highest level. Just because you know how to drive, that ain't going to help you here. So it takes a massive amount of training as a handler. I love labs and golden retrievers for service dogs, but it does depend on what service you actually need and what's available. But those breeds are typically pretty solid. 
Hello from Ohio. Represent. Hey, Andy. Love your Belgian Malinois. Thanks, Sharla. Is IGP the hardest dog sport? IGP is a great dog sport. IGP is a very difficult dog sport, but I believe that French ring and Mondial ring are the most difficult dog sports, but depends who you ask. Big Andy, good job. Congrats getting back out there. Thank you very much. How do you make your dog stay no matter what? That is the question, isn't it? First, you have to teach a clear, conflict-free stay. And then over several months, you need to incrementally build up the level of distraction. You need to reward and pay when it's appropriate. And if you do everything right and you escalate the behavior step-by-step -step properly, you'll have a bulletproof stay. Time for the Cup of Americas again. The Cup of Americas was fun. What the Cup of Americas is, it's a French ring event hosted by NARA where competitors from the U.S., Canada, and Mexico can come and compete. We had one in 2018. I was one of the decoys, and I'm not counting that as a championship, so technically four championships. And then I was decoying with a really talented decoy named Bambino from Mexico. But yeah, I think uh, we could run that back for sure. I've seen the police learn their canines to bite the arm with the weapon in it. And when the decoy changes the weapon, the dog also changes hands. Does French ring also do that? Absolutely not. So I don't like that at all. When a dog goes for the weapon hand and then they switch to another. But guys, a dog coming off of a grip that they've secured is wildly dangerous for the dog. Wildly dangerous. And police departments actually don't do that at all. That's only on silly YouTube and Instagram videos. If a police dog comes off the grip and bites the guy somewhere else, and now the bad guy's got a hundred holes in him and multiple limbs, that's no longer reasonable force. That's just a dog that's nervous mauling somebody. So, no, that's a big, 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 big no-no in actual protection training. When that dog secures a grip, they need to stay on that exact grip no matter what until their handler comes and gets them. I've seen those videos, too, where they bite here, they bite here, they bite here. That's just a super nervous dog all over the place. So, you definitely don't want that. Definitely not in French ring. You'll, your dog will be dead in French ring if it ever comes off the grip for any reason. Which country has the best Belgian Malinois breeders? Um, I don't know. That's a matter of opinion. It's like, you know, what country has the best coffee? What, what state has the best pizza? I mean, it's, it's up for debate, but there are certainly some good ones over in Europe, that's for sure. My German Shepherd puppy has hit seven months old and started demand barking. I've never heard of demand barking. I've never reinforced it. If I'm in the room and he starts barking, I leave. What more can I do? I feel he isn't responding to current techniques. So this is a seven month old with way too much freedom, way too quick. And when you see that, you see bad habits develop like a dog incessantly barking. So that dog needs a radical lifestyle change. Every interaction with that dog that you have has to be different. Remember this, guys. Your dog's behavior is dependent on two things. Write this down. Your dog's behavior is always dependent on two things. One. Every interaction and experience they have. Two, what they're doing when they're not training. I know that sounds general, but any behavior a dog ever has is a result of those two components. It's everything you ever do with the dog, everything the dog experiences, 
and what the dog's doing when they're not training. So if your dog is off-leash free roaming, hanging around your house when you're not training, that's a no-no. Hey Andy, is Jasper a social dog? How does he act with strange people and strange male dogs? Well, I would never put Jasper with a strange male dog. Um, he's perfectly social. I take him out and about all the time. Cool with strangers. He'll come up and love on you and let you pet him for as long as you will. So he's real social, but he doesn't mingle with strange dogs. That's a recipe for horrific disaster. He's a working dog. He's a Belgian Malinois. He's a working dog. Working dogs aren't, hey, look, here's a strange male dog. Go meet him. You know what I mean? Can you tell us what happened with the dog who fractured his upper jaw? I saw him on Instagram. Yeah, one of the dogs in French Ring 3 at the trial that I decoyed, the championship, he broke his jaw. He, he broke his jaw. It's a dangerous sport. It's a very dangerous sport. He's he going to be okay, but uh, it's a very dangerous sport. So he, he broke it on me, actually. Um, we we're doing the revolver attack. I'll, I'll post a video. We're doing the revolver attack. He comes downfield 50 bajillion miles an hour. I hit my Esquive move. He grabbed one of my legs by this much. And the force and momentum of the speed ripped him off the bite. He went, boom, went flying by, came back, bit me. We continued with the exercise, but on that entry, when he slipped off the bite, cracked the old jaw. Very dangerous sport. Like, guys, when I, I put out videos like, fetch is dangerous, don't play fetch with your dog, your dog will get hurt. And the, the commoners are, oh, Andy, you can't nerf the world. Oh, you're such a baby with your dog. Dogs get hurt. Guys, trust me, I do extremely dangerous techniques with my dogs in French ring. So if we're not out on the field where it counts, executing the program, I'm sure as heck not getting them hurt. Hey Andy, where'd you get the big cylinder shaped tug? That's Freddie's favorite toy. Can't find it. Um, I think it's from ALM. Andy, have you ever been bitten and needed to visit the doctor due to a dog bite? Got a story? I sure have. Yeah, I sure have. Actually, when I was, the one that comes to mind, Right there. I was learning French ring. It was probably 10 or 11 years ago. I was learning French ring. Dog came in for the entry. I tried to scoop the dog. Inadvertently, I ended up literally putting my hand in between the dog's mouth and my suit. And he bit down on my hand, put a pretty good hole in it. A couple stitches later, I was all set. Um... You know, so when you're doing decoy work, when you're learning decoy work, even if you have a super clean dog, if your hands go somewhere they're not supposed to, that could be a problem. What happened to Stone? Did he jam himself? No, thank God, the, the opposite, Dustin. Stone's the dog that, that fractured his upper jaw. Um, thank God it wasn't my fault. Like, if I'm the decoy and I jam the dog or I fall on the dog, oh. <sighs> Totally my fault. That's horrible. Worst case scenario. But no, I, I hit a perfect Esquive move. The dog, it, 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 two more centimeters, the dog would have totally missed. But he's so fast and technical and his neck can stretch so far that he bit by an eyelash and all that force pulled them off. And that happened a number of other times with dogs, and they were all fine. But this was just, I don't want to say one in a million, but it that does not happen off. I've never seen that happen. Um, so, no, he slipped off the grip. Was not anything that I did. Was not a jam. Thank goodness. How would you feel not being able to prepare conditioning and practice before the championships? You know, earlier in my career, I probably would have been nervous about it, but I actually liked it better. 
I like just getting a call and then a week later showing up to decoy. I did a little pre I did a little cardio, a little training, but hardly anything. I stay in really good shape all year round. Um, so I never got tired. I never got gassed. I, I was worried about it. It's not a good feeling when you got the best dogs in the world coming to kill you and your legs are jello and you're gassed out, been there. Um, but I felt great. I almost did no prep. And uh, thankfully with genetics and uh, lifestyle, I was able to go out there and have a good performance. So I felt good about it. If I wasn't so experienced, I probably would have been nervous, but I've also been around all the best decoys in the world. Spoiler, they don't live in the U.S. I've been around all the best decoys in the world. Man, when you get to a certain level, you just go out there and decoy. You ain't thinking about conditioning. Those guys ain't stretching. <laughs> they ain't doing crazy cardio. They just know the craft so well. They just go out there and do it. So I try to model myself after that. OG K9 says, hi, he referred me to you. Have three Malinois and live in Ohio. Nice, welcome aboard. Denmark is here, happy training, nice. What was your favorite attack this weekend? The revolver attack. I love the revolver attack. What the revolver attack is, is the handler places their dog in a stay on the start line. The decoy tests the line, make sure that the dog is staying runs down 40 meters. And guys, if you don't know, 40 meters, that's long. The dog can get some speed. So I go down 40 meters, I have a blank gun. As the dog's running, I fire a shot at 12 meters, at seven meters. Once the dog lands the bite, I fire another shot while the dog's on the bite. 10 second bite. Judge is gonna authorize the handler to out their dog. Handler outs the dog into a guard. After 10 seconds and the judge's authorization, I plan an escape, trying to get as far away from the dog as possible before he bites me. Dog bites, judge signals the handler, out and guard, five seconds, I escape again. Handler outs, comes up, picks up the revolver, recalls the dog. But my favorite was the revolver attack. The French decoy has the best face attack in the world by far. So we all really wanted him to have the face attack, so I made sure of that, um, and that left me with the gun attack. But I really like the gun attack because there's more opportunity to take points. On a face attack, you have your entry, you have your stick work, but it's a straight recall off the bite after 15 seconds. But the gun attack, I have my entry, I have my return, I have my time on the bite, and then I have those out and guards which gives me the opportunity and opens a window to possibly take more points than a face attack. So revolver attack for sure. Hey Andy, will I improve my dog's recall level if I stop him with a long line while he eats his food and when he leaves food to come to me and I reward him? Absolutely. So this question is saying your dogs, you put some food in a bowl, your dog's eating, 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 and then you call them when they're mid eating halfway through. So yeah, that's going to make your recall a lot better. As long as you don't train it with conflict or correction, that's going to make your recall so much better because now not only is your dog coming to you to get something that they want, your dog is choosing to leave something that's desirable to them to come back to you. So you start to get into the proofing phases of recall there more because it's one thing for a dog to just run over to you. It's another thing for them to stop what they're doing, something they want to be doing like eating and then come back to you. So yeah, that's a great technique. That dog's tough. That dog's very tough. Yes, he is. Best way to introduce a bite sleeve. Obviously, with a very credible helper or decoy is the very best way to do it. The dog should be on a back tie on either a harness or agitation collar. They should be posted out 
and you should let that decoy work his magic with the sleeve. But I definitely like the dog to be in prey drive when I introduce it. Sorry, lost my place. Uh, do you ever feed your working dogs in a bowl? Yeah, for sure, like every day. Hey Andy, what's the best way to introduce my 18 month old Mal to new people coming into my home? He's very protective and we don't have many visitors, but I wanna introduce people in the right way. So I would actually disagree with you on that, Joanne, an 18 month old Malinois, he's not protective, he's possessive, and he's nervous. Um, but if I were to come into your house and just assault you, the dog isn't going to take me down. He's not. He's not going to take me down. So he's not protective. If there isn't a threat that the dog is trained to subdue, it's not protective. It's possessive. So a radical lifestyle change is definitely in order. Um, if the dog is acting sketchy, the dog's nervous. Okay, when the dog's in a protective state of mind, they, they, they feel like they're going to dominate. They feel confident. A dog, that's a dog who's very nervous. So you got to do a lot of confidence building. Really, any video that I post here on the channel for free, executing those sessions to perfection with your dog month after month is going to cause a huge confidence boost. Um, people that come over, they need to be neutral to the dog and ignore the dog. A Belgian Malinois is not a pet dog. This is why Belgian Malinois do not make good pet dogs because now you have a dog who acts very sketchy and nervous when your friends and family come over. So it's definitely a big, big... Um, you know, that makes me nervous. Uh, but everyone needs to be neutral and ignore the dog and you need to engage the dog um, with training that they they know and love. Is French ring at a club level as dangerous as level three? Well, at a club level, there's level threes. You know, a club trial is just a club hosting a local trial. You know, call it a local trial. But there's definitely ring ones, twos, and threes, brevets in any club trial. So, heck, yeah, it's, it's as dangerous. Now, you know, they're not flying in the best decoy in the world to do your club trial. Um, but if you have a lightning fast dog, anytime you send that dog downfield, it's dangerous. I don't care if it's in a brevet against a nobody or level three against the best in the world. If you have a lightning fast dog and you send them downfield at the decoy, that's dangerous for the dog and the decoy for sure. I start to train my Roddy to ignore reactive dogs and being totally neutral towards other dogs. When reactive dogs bark at him, he's still sitting and staying next to me and ignores the dog. Good job. We want to video your highlights so we can admire you. I'm, I, they're coming, man. They're coming. You know, when I'm, when I'm decoying the championship, you know, like the last thing I'm thinking about is like getting video. But I know a lot of people did, so it'll, it'll be trickling in sometime or not you know but yeah I'll, well, I'll i'll get some stuff out what was the decoy's choice or your choice what the so the decoys pick what exercises they want so there's two decoys in every trial no matter what two decoys so let's take a level one you have a face attack gun attack flea attack defense four so there's two decoys. So the first decoy is going to take the first two. Second decoy is going to take the second two. So if it's me, if the first two are gun attack and face attack, and the other two are flea attack and defense, I'm probably going to want the face attack and the gun attack. Uh, but it's, it's up to the senior decoy exactly what exercises they want to choose for the program. The French decoy, he was very nice. He just let me pick... <laughs> whatever I wanted, so it worked out good. 
follow up on the demand bark question. I'm going to limit his freedom and crate him. I do four walks a day with him and 40 minutes. So don't worry about walks or the amount of time you train the dog or they run and they play. Don't worry about any of that. None of that matters. It's what work is the dog doing daily, not exercise. Exercise all day, don't exercise at all, that doesn't matter. What work is the dog doing? How are you working the dog? Is it at a bare novice level? Is it at an intermediate? Is it at an advanced level? How are you working the dog? Demand barking, it's a pet term. I've never even heard that. Demand bark. That's just a dog who's off-leash free roam in the house and is obnoxious. That's a dog that just owns you. That's a dog that has manipulated you from day one. That's a dog that has your number. Um, so it all comes down to working the dog, not exercising. If you have a Belgian Malinois and they don't legitimately work more days a week than not, you're going to have a laundry list of shenanigans and problems with them. He still has a lot of energy after that. I'm over exercising, creating a. Yeah, don't worry about exercise. Don't worry about exercise. You need to worry about work. Anyone can exercise a dog, very few people can work a dog. Exercise is an easy way out. I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but just generally speaking, exercise is a very easy way out. It's a way for people to avoid training. Why do you want to avoid training? Because training is extremely difficult and you're going to fail. You're not going to be good at it at first at all. You need six months, two years to start to become somewhat competent with training. So to avoid all that really, really, really hard work, people will just run the dog and walk the dog and take the dog to the dog park and go, look, they're tired. Okay, mission accomplished today. But if you have a working dog and the dog doesn't work, you are not honoring that dog's genetics. So no matter how much you love them, no matter how much you play or go for walks or run around, you're not honoring the genetics of that dog because you're not working them. A working dog that doesn't work is gonna have problems. Keep it up, Andy. Thank you, William. What do you recommend to get started in NARA? Any trainers you recommend in Northern Ohio for this? Jennifer, here's the problem with ring sport in America. There's very few number of clubs. There's an even fewer amount of clubs that are really at an expert level. High level certified decoys, high level handlers, there's just very few. Every club that I know of are so busy and so full, somebody knew they can't even entertain it. Like, sorry to say, but like, if, if anyone ever wanted to come train with me for French ring, I'd say, what club are you in and what level is your dog? And if you say, oh, I'm not in a club and me and my dog have never trained it, you just can't train with me. I mean, I just can't start from square. I already have a huge list of super advanced dogs that I'm pouring a lot of time into so for like a raw beginner that's like i have a malinois i want to get involved in this there's going to be maybe one percent of clubs that would even entertain that that's that's really the hardest part um going to seminars is much better like uh one of my favorite decoys in the states uh joakim devat i think he's like a six time Mondial Ring Championship decoy, phenomenal trainer. Like going to one of his seminars is far better than joining a club. You know, um, I, I could name some other people, but going to seminars is a much better bet. Joining a club, I mean, unless you're a, a legit decoy 
or your dog is a brevet level one, level two, level three. It's just going to be really hard to do that. Can you explain why you aren't a big fan of the dog having crazy ball drive for IGP? Now, I actually didn't say that. I said I'm not a huge fan of my dog having crazy ball drive. I'm not a fan of that at all. Some people love that. I, I just don't like it. I, I like my dog to just, hey, leave the ball alone. And he just goes, okay, and just walks away from the ball. Um, that's just my preference. I, I don't really use the ball to train. Um, there's just balls laying everywhere all over my property. So a dog that's just like insane about the ball, it's just, I just prefer not to have it. For IGP, it's probably good though. Um, for French ring, it's not necessary. Hey Andy, it's just personal preference. I just don't want it. Hey Andy, why is my dog stable and not nervous but 90% of dogs in my city is reactive and nervy. Is that nerves or genetics or because I raise and train him right? It's because that most people, well, let me be careful. Let me be careful here. Well, I can say that a very high percentage of people that own a dog, like in the 90s, very high percentage of people that own dogs never do a moment of legitimate training with the dog. Their lifestyle is all off from day one. The owner's mindset is all off from day one. The owner's idea of training is way off. And then six months to a year later, you have a big mess. So I'd say that's why. What dog won decoy's choice? Um, we don't do that in French ring. We don't do that. The dog that got first place was pretty good though. There was, I mean, if I had to pick one of my favorite dogs, there were just too many. I mean, I could have a top five, but all of them were good. Andy, how can I come train with you? Wear the suit and learn from the master. My friend, my friend from Greece, up and coming trainer, up and coming decoy, up and coming handler. I think uh, Akis in the last year has gotten his uh, Mondial Ring decoy certification. He's decoyed some trials. He's gotten his dogs uh, category one in Mondial Ring, moving up the ranks. Uh, so big up and coming trainer there. Watch out for him, Akis. Um, I don't want to butcher your name, but he's from Greece. Very promising prospect in dog sports. You message me on Instagram, my friend, and we will get you out here. I promise you that. I'm, not, I'm actually not exercising my dog too much. I only work him and train him, and he gets mentally tired. If I give him to search for a ball or distract, great mentality. So, look, sometimes we're going to disagree. You may say, I don't exercise him that much. I might say, yeah, too much. Difference of opinion. Now, I'm not trying to single you out here. My least favorite thing in the world for a dog is for them to search around and find their toy. It's a myth that that's a mental workout for, for the dog. I never do it. Any client I have that does it, I tell them my opinion. It's like the last thing I do. It's a very easy way out. It's a way to avoid training. You all they searched for uh, 20 minutes. He found his ball. Oh, he's tired. Mental workout. It's just not. It's just not. That's just a dog doing what a dog would do. You unleash them in your yard. They'll go sniff around and do. It's not training. It's not mental exercise. It has nothing to do with the handler. It doesn't create a bond between you two. The dog isn't working for you. Um, I'm sorry to say it is like my least favorite thing. And it's certainly not work. Just in my opinion.
Yes, training starts the moment you pick up that puppy from the breeder. Absolutely. Hey, Andy, I have a problem with his ball drive. When I tie him on leash and drop the ball, he doesn't go crazy for the ball or tug. He only stays and looks at the ball and wants me to release him. I don't see a problem there. Why do you want him to go crazy? A dog doesn't need to be hectic and stressed to have drive. I prefer it the other way. What's the method to get the dog to have more drive when training? The genetics are the genetics. You know what I mean? If you're trying to change your dog's personality and, and characteristics, you might just have the wrong dog for you. But I, with my dogs, I never build drive. I'm only capping drive. I'm only capping drive. When you get a quality Belgian Malinois, the drive is built in, my brother. You do not need to agitate the crap out of that dog and make him go nuts and have high drive. Trust me, the drive's there. Is dominance-based training working? I have no idea what that is, which probably isn't a good sign. Did Jasper do ring three at the national level? Oh, yeah. Are you hoping for the same for Freddie? I'm not hoping for it. I know it. If Freddie doesn't compete at nationals at a very high level, it's because of me. It's not because of the dog. It's because I messed something up. But no, I don't think Freddie will. I don't hope Freddie will. I know Freddie will. And yeah, Jasper has competed at the national level. Jasper's competed against the best decoys in the world, outside of the U.S. even. Um, so he's earned his stripes and proved himself on the battlefield. So I would expect nothing less from Freddie. Every dog I get should be better than the previous one, so score-wise. So I expect all Freddie's scores to be higher than Jasper's for sure. If not, I'm not going to be happy. Hey, Andy, is three times a day a reasonable amount of times for a dog to go to the bathroom? Um reasonable mm, at least four four to six like six is good but you could on a, like a one-off day that you're just like insanely busy like if you're like getting married or like something like that and you and you have an older dog and you pop them out three times you could get away with that but every single day i don't think it's enough i mean the dog's not gonna like explode but a little more than three. What age would you say a dog is no longer a puppy? It depends on what your definition of a puppy is. You know, post-teething, sure, they're still a puppy, but they're not a puppy. You know what I mean? You have a one-year-old dog, you could say, oh yeah, my puppy, but... I don't know. What's your definition of a puppy? What's the definition? You know, is it like quite literal? Is it, well, like he's, he's done growing, so now depends on your definition. <laughs> uh, I hate compliments. And he's the master. He never talks big for himself, but trust me, people, he is the master of dog sports. I'd be the trainer I am today if it wasn't for him. Thank you, brother. We just getting started, baby. We getting started, man. You going to the top. You're going to the top, man. Many professional dog trainers told me in order to fix leash pulling is to use a prong collar or another type of leash, but you were telling us to learn the dog to heal. Yeah, no such thing as fixing leash pulling. There's only building a conflict-free heel. And professional dog trainer, mm, dog trainers are like handymen. Everyone's a dog trainer. Everyone's a handyman. But... 
just because someone calls themselves a professional dog trainer, to me, that doesn't, okay, doesn't really, what are their accomplishments? Not, oh, they train a thousand dogs a year. What are their actual accomplishments with their dogs? That's what I'd want to know. The trainer worked for the canine police dog. Even worse. All right, y'all. I got to jump off here. It's been a pleasure. New videos every Monday. Just getting started. Stay tuned. Happy training. Peace out.